Thank y'all for watching the video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Let your friends know about it so they can tell their friends. Hit that like button if you ain't hit that as well. I appreciate y'all for watching it. Pelican Bay Kennels, Hog Dog News. Let's go. chain weight 56 condition 24 time winner nothing lasting past 40 minutes for 24 times nothing lasts past 40 minutes and the dog I'm talking about we got to bring it from the past to the present to see if he could do that in 2021 what he did in his days the dog I'm talking about is no other than the famous Kobe's picture, the dog in his background, Kobe's picture. Now Kobe's picture was said to be the best dog to ever live today. The best dog to ever live today. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta take you back. In order to understand all this, we gotta go back to see if he could actually do the things that he did back then today in modern day times. Now, born on the last day of December, last day of December, 1896. So it was turning on to 1897. Cold winter. All right, the first thing we factor in is, is the era. Like I said, the era, the, the time that he was in. 1896, 1896 through four, eight, 1900. You know, and he, he probably lived longer than that, you know, and, and probably hunted longer than that or whatever he did longer than that. But I'm just giving you an estimate from 1896 to 1900 or whatever. No laws compared to what the laws is now. You know, he probably was free to do basically anything with his dog because they probably wasn't even worrying about, you know, dog laws and all kind of stuff in you know, 1896. You know, people was trying to get their laws. You know, that was just like uh, 20 or 30 years after slavery, if it was even any laws. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, 24 times. Now, real quick, we're going to bring one of the modern day dogs, like Macho Buck, to. 1896. Now, he was a grand champion in one year, modern day times. You put him in 1896, he probably, you know, he probably would have been like a, you know, tell us what he would have been. But can we say that? Can we say that? Can we say the competition is more stiffer now than it was back then? You know, those guys were doing a lot of experimenting, even though they was bringing, importing a lot of dogs in. A lot of the guys did a lot of experimenting to, to get what they wanted. And from what I heard and read, it said those guys were real secretive on their pedigrees. And they, it wasn't like how it is today. Everybody want to, you know, put their blood here, 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 and here. Back then, those guys were trying to keep their blood. You know what I'm not saying everybody was, or Mr. Kobe was. But the majority of the people was trying to keep their pedigree secret. I'm going to make the secret sauce. I got the secret sauce coming. You know, now it's more paper based and you got to have your paperwork right. And, you know, people, you got the people who just care about the dogs itself, you know. But the, for the most part, people want the dog and the paperwork together, you know, 2021. So the thing is, do you think all of Pitcher's competition was high quality, high quality dogs? Or at least average quality dogs for back then. Because you know, you never know if 1896, you know, telling the people who's bringing bulldogs, mixed bulldogs, mixed shepherds, anything, anything they bought the picture and pictures stood up to the contest. You know, because everybody might be didn't, you know, some people believed in hunting other kind of breeds of dogs. And when you, when you felt like he could beat picture, he probably stood up to the test and, and bought picture against those kind of dogs. So, or do you think, you know, I'm not saying that it did happen today, I'm just assuming. Or do you think that picture went against 24 high quality bulldogs? 
Now, if he went against 24 high-quality Bulldogs, he can easily come in 2021 and do the same thing. Another thing that comes into play were the rules the same back then compared to modern day times. You know, back in 1896 and the early 1900s, were the rules the same? You know, did people play the game the same? Did, you know, that all plays a factor in would he be the same quality dog today that he was back then? Not taking anything from him then, because you can only go with your times, whatever your times is. You know, but we just playing this little what if scenario. This is like, what if LeBron played with Michael Jordan? Could he handle that time of era, you know? Could Tom Brady play with Terry Bradshaw and them boys? You know, he did, some people say Tom Brady too soft to play with um, Terry Bradshaw and the Steel Curtain and them boys back in them days. You know, and Lou Alzada and them boys. And you know, like, can the modern day dog handle what dogs handled in the early 1900s. Who knows? We all don't, nobody knows. We can just have our opinions and, and start a conversation about it. Now looking at some of you guys' videos, get some good information and reading, I found out that one of Kobe's dogs killed his nephew in 1909. You know, and he didn't get rid of that dog. So people saying like these dogs were bred to be uh, friendly to people from the beginning. I don't really think that they were bred to be friendly to people. I just think that was a coincidence. Some, and most of them are good with people. And then you get the bad apples just like anything, you know? Uh, if you want to call that a bad apple. Some people like the dogs that bite people. But uh, yeah, the, uh, 1909, a Kobe dog killed his nephew. Now it wasn't a dog picture that did the killing that I'm talking about. They say he was friendly as it could be with kids. You could run up behind him and he'd just turn around and lick you in the face when it comes to kids and stuff like that. Like he was the perfect pet, the perfect pet. All right, now after doing a lot of research, this is just my opinion. And maybe if I sit down and think about it, I might have a different opinion. But this is just one of my opinions, all right? From what they said, a lot of the Kobe dogs reached a lot of bad people hands back in them days. Not, not mean bad people, I mean they weren't the best of dog men. They didn't know how to get the best out of the dogs. Not saying they did anything wrong with the dogs. They just didn't know how to get the best out of the dogs, all right? Now, and, and then they start getting to the point where the Kobe dog was used as a beginner dog. You know, like, you just get into the game, you get a Kobe dog, but when you, you moving up to the, the other bloodlines after that, you know? And I believe it got, and now today it's like, the Kobe dogs aren't considered the highest quality of the game dogs. You know what I'm saying? As far as being game, 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 game wise. You know what I'm saying? All right, and I believe all that comes from starting out with the bad breeders. I mean, the bad, um, giving it to the bad dog men. The ones who are not doing the right things with the Kobe dog. You know, the, the good, the guys that Mr. Kobe sold his dogs to that was good dog men back then, they probably didn't get the best Kobe dogs at the end of the day and couldn't do what they needed to do with them. And the ones who actually got the super Kobe dogs, they was probably bullshit dog men. So the dogs really didn't get the proper recognition that they needed to get and the proper breeding that they needed to get to the right dogs and the outlines and stuff like that, you know? And that's where we at to where we is today because the dog never really had a fair chance besides Mr. Kobe and his family breeding the dogs. And you know, other people did their breeders, got good dogs off of them. You know, of course, and all the Kobe dogs are every single person dog, damn near who got a damn pit bull. But what I mean, you know, like I'm saying, People don't really consider the Kobe dogs the top of the line quality game dogs for 2021. And if you're not careful, guys, Red Boy Jocko, 30 years now, you be careful. Because there's a lot of game Red Boy Jocko out there. But, just like they say about the Kobe dog, they say the Kobe dogs are in the staffs and the game dogs, okay? Now, that means there will be Kobe dogs in the pedigrees and some of them blue dogs. And Kobe dogs in the pedigrees are all our dogs. All right? So we know that people breeding them Red Boy Jocko dogs with blue dogs and all kind of stuff like that. All right? Now, later on down the line, you know, they, it's going to be Red Boy. And they already talking about Red Boy Jocko dogs don't got a whole, whole lot of mouth. Whole, whole lot of mouth. They mouth, they mouth, they mouth soft. They mouth soft. They mouth soft. So 
That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. So next, once they lose the gamers, once they say, oh, they ain't gamers they used to be, they ain't gamers they used to be, that's going to be pretty much it for the Red Boy Jocko. People going to start not and start waving away from it. You know what I'm saying? Because they're already saying them out gone. So once they start saying the game is gone, then they're going to pretty much weed away from it. And then they're going to, it's going to be like the Kobe dog was. Or is, rather. You know, not considered a high quality game dog. Red Boy Jocko down here, everything else up here. And Red Boy Jocko down here with the Kobe. And these some of the highest quality dogs, it just got to the wrong dog man hands. And that can happen to any bloodline. Any bloodline. It just so happened to happen to Mr. Kobe because he was one of the first ones that did it. And, you know, it wasn't too much competition for him probably back then compared to how it is now for the average person. You know, and, you know, the people that he did deal with, you know, some of them did the right things because that's why we were blessed to have the dogs that we got. And then I seen something on one of the flyers about one of the stud fee for Mr. Kobe dogs at the time. I can't remember which dog it was, but the stud fee was $25. And I'm like, whoo. $25. Man, that's cheap. But imagine back then, 1896, uh, 1900, $25 was a lot of money. You know, it probably wasn't means and he wasn't rich off of it, but $25 was a lot of money back then, you know. So it's, it's funny when you look at it though on a flyer compared to what you look at now, the breeder dog. People want a thousand, two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred to breed a dog. And and he was charging twenty five dollars, you know. It's just funny to look at it now compared with how money value go up and down over time. All right, now for Mr. Kobe to have some of the best pit bulls in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the only thing could have happened is them dogs got to the wrong hands, wrong breeders was made, and people didn't do what they were supposed to do with the dogs. You know, that's the only thing that could have happened. Could have happened. And I mean, like, not even necessarily the people that he sold the dogs to the first generation. It could have been the second generation, you know. Somebody did bad breedings with the dog, thinking they was washing this out and washing that out. But actuality, you know, you, you just should have went and bought a good Kobe dog and then bred it, you know, with the stuff that you had. Now, Kobe's primo on that picture was what the AKC used, I think, in like the 1930s to recognize the pit bull. This picture right here. To recognize the pit bull. Because they weren't recognizing them as pit bulls at first. American pit bulls, they were recognizing them as staffs because they felt like the pit bull had the fighting reputation on them and they wanted to call it something different. Just call it something different. But it's still the pit bull. You know, we just don't want that reputation from the fight and all that to be without AKC company. But in, but in the 1930s, they recognized the pit bull. And thanks to Mr. Kobe, this is the dog that they, you know, use for the standards. All right, and a lot of people, don't, a lot of them guys back then, kind of steered away from the the, the big dogs because most of the dogs from them them areas were small. They say as years went on, the dogs start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, back then, those guys were saying they were small. So the original pit bulls were more smaller based dogs compared to the dogs from the 60s, 70s, and the 80s start getting bigger. You know, and, and and now it's to the point where they, they went from getting small to getting bigger to back to getting smaller again. Now, I don't know how that happened, but it just seemed like for my era, the dogs were bigger than it is now. The average dog was bigger in the mid-90s to the early 2000s than it is now. You know, if you get a yellow dog now, it's not going to be as big as the yellow dog you would have got in the 90s. And, you know, so this is how crazy how breeding can change a whole lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the only thing that made the dogs bigger back then from the time when they start getting them, they came in short. When they was imported, they was coming in short and getting bigger and bigger. Only thing that happened is because, you know, they probably bred them with bulldogs. They probably bred them with all kinds of different dogs. And the other dogs were bigger dogs. And they did selective breeding probably back then. Breeding them to bigger pit bulls. Whoever had their own preference of dogs. And they end up with the bigger dog. I ain't gonna take y'all into no history or nothing like that. I'll just, you know, give me something to think about. Could Kobe's picture survive in 2021? Could he be a 24 or 20, what is it, 24? Could he be a 24 timer in 2021? You know? And could he, he's a 70 pound chain dog, 56, 75 pound chain, 
56 pound condition. Could he handle or hunt dogs like Nate? That's a question I want to know. Who would who would win that hunt? Kobe's pitcher or Mayday? Same size dogs. Kobe's pitcher or Mayday? I'm quite sure most people are gonna say Mayday. But you know, leave your uh, answers in the comments below. You know, I respond to them or whatever. And everybody's opinions is welcome. You know what I'm saying? This is just all for fun, all for jokes, games or whatever. Who y'all think would have won between Kobe's pitcher and Mayday? Kobe's pitcher, 24-time winner. Mayday, five-time. Mayday a big boy. Kobe's pitcher a big boy. Both big bone dogs. Both come from uh, top of the line dog men. Mr. Kobe probably had to get you know a little higher rank than Mayday's on him. You know what I'm saying? Just just because of, you know the timing. That's all because of the error and the timing and stuff like that. Because if Mayday was back in uh, 1896, I'm quite sure he would have been had the reputation Mr. Kobe had. But it is what it is, and right now Mr. Kobe is the cream of the crop when it comes to dog men. And like I say, if I step with one of y'all guys or ladies or whoever and, and say, I got a 24-time winner. I want to stud him out, and I put picture up on the um, I put picture up on the Facebook or whatever, and post him up for stud. Would y'all believe me, 2021, that this dog is a 24 time winner? Times change, though. Times change, you know, cause this times change, man. Like you can see the pictures in the background. That's why I put all the old pictures in the background and stuff like that, so you can see kind of what era we talking about. They know the laws, the rules, and not necessarily the rules to go and hunt, but just the type of environment that he was in to get off 24 wins. You know what I'm saying?